David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I don't have a pen for you, but I do have a very interesting pen accessory that has just been launched via a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, that product is from the company Good Made Better, and it is the Penwell Traveler. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Penwell Traveler and show you how I've grown to use it over the last several weeks that I've had this cool new device. Uh, Dan Keller is the gentleman behind Good Made Better. Uh, he's based out of the small town of Wallace, South Dakota. Uh, about a year ago, he launched his first product, the Penwell. Uh, this is what the original one looks like. Uh, this is the aluminum model, but they're also available in a number of other materials. Uh, this original model was very well received by the community. Uh, the concept behind the Penwell is that it will adhere to your desk uh, with a method that we'll discuss here in a little bit, and it turns just about any pen in your collection into a desk pen. Uh, the impetus behind the new model, the Traveler, was to create a design that was more portable, more lightweight. Uh, this aluminum model does have a bit of heft to it uh, and have less of a traditional aesthetic. And this is what Dan came up with, the Penwell Traveler. Uh, it has a more modern look and feel to it compared to the original model. Uh, that uh, This Traveler is available in three different colors. There is a tumbled raw aluminum one. Uh, there is one with what's called a snow white Cerakote finish with a brass bolt. And then this one here in a stormy gray Cerakote finish. Now, Cerakote is actually a type of finish that's sort of like paint and sealant all at the same time, uh, much in the same way that lacquer serves as a sealant for wood or ebonite. Uh, it creates a hard surface that resists scratching and other abrasions. Uh, it is a compact size, uh, and that it's about one inch by one inch by two inches. And for being metal, it's fairly light at 1.3 ounces. So, Let's go actually go over how you use this neat tool. Uh, first of all, you want it to adhere to a surface. Now, it's not done through any type of glue or adhesive. On the bottom here is what is called a micro suction pad. Uh, it's pressure sensitive, so the more you press down on the surface, the better it will adhere. Uh, and it's easily uh, removable and reusable once you've stuck it to the surface. Um, if there's no glue or adhesive, What's really causing this to stick and why doesn't it wear out? Well, to show you that, I dusted off my microscope camera. I haven't used this for a while, but I felt it was appropriate here. This is what the pad looks like up close. You can all see all the little holes in the material. Uh, what happens is that when some pressure is applied, each of these little holes acts like a little suction cup. Uh, and having tens of thousands of them on the bottom here uh, helps this thing stick pretty good. Um, once you have it placed, then you can actually rotate the body here to the angle that you desire. And then you can insert your pen. Uh, inside is a soft foam insert that will snugly hold uh, the cap of your pen. Uh, there's an internal taper to the foam so that the further in uh, that you insert the cap, uh, the tighter the grip on the cap will be. Uh, while this insert accommodates a wide variety of sizes of caps, um, if you have a pen that's very thin, then you can actually push out the uh, foam out of the back here and then reverse it and put it back in. And then the smaller of the two ends will be on the outside and better accommodate those really thin pens. Now, what pens does the Traveler accommodate? Uh, surprisingly enough, a wide variety. Uh, that it handles this classic pens LB5, that one slips right in there uh, and it works just fine. Uh, but this is about the extent of how large a pen can be as far as girth in regard to the, uh, the cap. This is a fairly large pen. Uh, I have a Pilot Custom Marushi here and this pen is actually too large. This one doesn't work well with that, but this is a very large oversized pen. Uh, something like the uh, Mont Blanc 149, uh, that fits great. Uh, and that in regard to some more standard sized pens, uh, a Lamy 2000, that one fits perfect in there, uh, as well as a Lamy All-Star. That those fit just great in here as well. Once you've inserted a pen, um, I find myself, actually here, let's put in one where you actually unscrew it. Uh, that you can unscrew the cap and operate your pen basically with just one hand. Um, now, 
I find myself unscrewing the cap and then just setting the pen in there so I could just easily take it in and out. Um, I haven't had any issues with the pen drying out like this at all, um, but if you wanted to, um, it's easy enough to screw this cap closed and then unscrew it with one hand. Uh, but it's kind of more convenient to, uh, to do everything with just one hand. Now, if it is a snap cap, like this Lamy All-Star, uh, then I recommend just kind of also leaving it in loose in here because to uncap it with one hand, you kind of have to like reverse your grip and that then kind of grab it with the bottom and the top and that can get a bit awkward. But if you just have it sitting in here, then it's really simple just to uh, basically to pull out and uh, you're ready, pretty much ready to write. You just pull it out and you're good to go. Uh, and that uh, there's a metal bar here in the back that creates uh, a hinge uh, and that has a plastic protective sleeve on it. So if you really get the cap of your pen in there, it's not going to have contact with the metal. Um, you know, I like that this could be used at multiple angles. You can adjust it up and down as you wish. And, you know, I'd say typically it's used kind of facing you in this orientation, uh, but you could also turn it around. It actually angles back at 113 degrees. And so if you use it this way, then the flat surface that is on the back here is kind of hidden behind the body. So it gives it more of a slick look. Uh, you, you can actually also use this vertically as well. Uh, here it is stuck to a whiteboard in my office. Um, it sticks to a whiteboard really well. Now, I will say that the smoother the surface you are using, the better. Uh, my desk here behind me uh, has a little bit of texture to it, and I find that uh, this will stick okay, but not fantastic. Uh, but my desk at work, that's another story. It has kind of more of a slick, glossy finish to it, and it sticks great to that surface. Uh, here's what that looks like. You know, I found this to really be perfect for my desk at work. Um, here's my work setup. I, I kind of keep this near my, uh, my Dudex stationer over here on the right hand side. Uh, here's my full battle station. Uh, on the wall is my Graham Romeo Bigfoot painting, uh, as well as my Joey Feldman Plague Doctor print, uh, both of which I greatly love. Uh, but this Traveler fits right in. Uh, actually, since I took these pictures, I've actually moved it a little bit further left, closer to the Dudex. Uh, if you do have to move it to a new position, it does easily come off and in no way does it damage the surface that was on. Uh, but once you remove it, there are times when the pad kind of loses a bit of its adhesiveness. Uh, and this is because dirt and dust and junk can get in those little holes that we saw earlier and really diminish their capability. Uh, what you could do is you could really rejuvenate the pad in a couple of different ways. Uh, you could use a damp cloth to clean it off. Uh, and if you do that, then you just need to let it sit for a bit so it can dry out. Um, but what I like to do is use a little bit of scotch tape. Um, you can put it on here and just put it on here and peel it off. And I'm not sure how well you could really tell that, but you can see just from the part I peeled off that it's gray here where there was a lot of dirt and it's a lot blacker or shinier up there. I don't know if you can quite catch that. But you just go over it a couple of times and peel it off. Go over it a couple of times, peel it off, and then it's good to go. Uh, and all the dirt and stuff is removed. And uh, that, uh, you know, I don't have one with me, uh, but it actually does come with a zippered clamshell storage case. So you can take it around and you can uh, minimize the chance of damaging the micro suction pad at the bottom as well. Now, if anything should ever happen to that suction pad uh, or the foam insert, there will be replacement uh, parts available for a reasonable price on the Good Made Better site. Um, they already offer the replacement parts uh, for the original pen well. Uh, and I've had mine for about a year and nothing's worn out on this one. So I feel as long as you're not abusing it, this will last for quite some time, as well as the Traveler. Um, that uh, I've had this traveler on my work on my uh, uh, at work for a few weeks, and I've really grown fond of it. Um, actually, while I'm not really even using it for a pen, I kind of find myself kind of holding on to it, kind of almost like a gear shift for a car. It's almost like a fountain pen fidget toy that I have on my desk. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign launched only a few days ago, and it's already more than doubled the initial goal. Uh, there are a number of different purchase levels for the Penwell Traveler, but essentially the aluminum model is $37. Uh, and the white and gray models like this one with the Cerakote treatment are $43. 
Uh, and I feel those prices are fair for what you receive here. Uh, it's a quality product. It's innovative. Uh, it's solidly built. And from what I've experienced, especially with the original Penwell, this isn't falling apart anytime soon. Uh, on top of that, it's something that I am essentially going to use on a daily basis. So I feel that there is value here. Uh, you know, that I, I kind of didn't even want to bring this one home to shoot this video. It, it's really found a home on my work desk and uh, it would be back there on Monday morning. Um, I did notice this morning that the uh, this Storm Gray model was very close to selling out on the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, there was a little more availability on some of the other two versions, but if you wanted this gray one like this, you might want to act sooner rather than later. One thing I liked about this campaign is that it has a rather short fulfillment time. Uh, there are some Kickstarters you back where it takes six or seven months to receive the product. Uh, I have one from nine months ago that I'm still waiting on. Uh, it's mid-October right now, and Dan's goal is to have these in customers' hands in January. So that's about three months, which for a Kickstarter project is a pretty good turnaround. Uh, thanks go out to Dan with Good Made Better for sending this unit out for me to test. I appreciate it. Uh, I would recommend that you check out his Kickstarter campaign. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.